from the cradle to the day I jumped off the porch. I just can never get with sports. But I got just Dre here, and we're going to talk about it. Stay tuned. What's going on, folks? It's your boy Javier Javier with the Javier Javier Show. Make sure show you say it twice. I got my boy Just Dre in the building. What's up? We at it again. Yes, sir. Today, we're going to talk about sports. And it's coming from the direction of me. I ain't never liked sports. Never, ever, ever. Could never get into it. And trust me, I tried. Then I got my boy here. He a sports guy. So we're going to talk about sports today. And we just want to send out RIP to Kobe. You know, shots out to the boy. Oh. You know? <laughs> so we're doing this in yeah. honor of you. Hopefully we can um, have a good discussion. So... Let's, uh, let's talk about it, just Dre. Let me oh, ask you this. Yes, sir. You know, what is it that you like about sports or any sports in particular? Uh, so, like, I'm a, like, I'm a basketball guy. I love basketball and boxing. And, uh, like, just in general, like, sports in general, I think, I think why they're so good. Uh, we can, like, talk about, like, we can go to, like, the whole primal, you know, like humanistic aspect, like the elements of sports, like historically, like all the way from, you know, Rome and, you know, mm -hmm. like even before that, like to Africa, you know, like they were saying like a lot of like wrestling and stuff actually originated in Africa. But anyway, like that's a whole other story, but sports to me is like, it provides really good metaphors for life. It, um, especially when you play sports early, it teaches you like certain things that you're gonna have to use later on in life, like certain skills, like teamwork or learning how like to adapt and stuff. You know, okay. um, it's also a, a good equalizer. Um, I know, I know, like you're a big proponent in, um, you know, strongest, strongest of the fittest, or oh, survival yeah. of the fittest, and survival stuff. of the fittest. Yeah. yeah. So, see, for you, like, if you were like to look at it at sports like through that kind of lens, I think you can find. It. Find some things about it, you know, to appreciate. Now, I always uh, played sports growing up. I played football, baseball. I played uh, basketball. Yeah. Uh, so these are some of the things that I played growing up. And I always enjoyed playing sports. I mean, I was pretty good at it for the most part. I wouldn't say I was the best. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I had my moments where I was like, you know, a force to be reckoned with. But even when I was younger, I could never really watch sports. I could never sit down and watch football or basketball on television. I could never, like, to me, I was just bored. Mm -hmm. And I guess a lot of people take it as they look at stats. You got some sports fanatics out there. They look at every single thing. Oh, they watch, yeah. you know. So when people start talking sports and I'm around, I, it's like they speak in a foreign language to me. And you just, you just tune out, huh? Yeah, I just yeah. tune out. It's like they speak in a different language I don't speak. And uh, I don't know how many people out there don't watch sports, but from my perspective, I think that sports are <sighs> sports are fun to play, mm -hmm. but to watch, that's where I get the problem at. Like, why do I care if these guys are so good at football? Why should sports be more than just games people play in middle school and high school or college? Why should we be watching it on a national scale? You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, these guys make millions of millions of dollars. And, I mean, doctors, lawyers, people like that don't make as much money as these guys. Teachers, for instance. Like, mm -hmm. why should I spend my hard-earned money to go watch these guys play sports? Why not give that money to somebody who actually helps in the community? How about a teacher? Why teachers don't make more? So, I know I'm sounding more like a liberal, but, you okay, know, these so. are some of the things that... Mm -hmm. Concerns me as society as a whole. Why do people spend so much money on sports when they're not willing to pay teachers more? I think it's like, but with that particular uh, conversation, and like, trust me, I'm 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 the last guy I like to try to protect the corporation or anything like that. Well, I, I need to stop saying that because like I do like capitalism. Let me stop trying. <laughs> but um, he likes capitalism, folks. Oh, oh, my God, oh he's converting. Nah. But, um, <laughs> Like, with, like, sports in particular, because technically... So, like, like the short answer to your question is it's because of structure. Like, every like every business has its own rules as far as, like, how it corresponds to money and how it traps that money. So, for, like, sports, like, technically, like, each team is, is a, a private private club and stuff. And, like, it's mostly funded, um, you know, by, like, the owners and then, like, the revenue from, like, the merch and, like, shit like that. So... 
like these exorbitant um, contracts and like these exorbitant amounts of uh, money and stuff is kind of like it's kind of like okay, like you earn, like you help us earn this much in like revenue because of like you're so you're LeBron James, so obviously like you're a higher stock. Like we're gonna get. Like we're selling more tickets, we're selling more jerseys, we're selling more merch and stuff. So like you're like a partner in that. So like they kind of give you like a percentage of that, versus something like a uh, teacher, like a teacher, or, or like a cop that has like a a ba- like a oh, regular yeah. structure. Like I, I definitely believe like yes, capitalism. I believe in the freedom of association. So I strongly believe that people should spend their money on whatever it is that they want to spend their money on. One reason that I'm against, you know, high taxes, I'm I'm against the government <laughs> coming and taking more and more of my money. I believe that I should be able to spend my money that I earn personally mm-hmm. uh, in the way that I see fit. And for some people, that's helping people. Some people that's watching sports. Some people that's, you know, donating to certain foundations or whatever the case may be. But, like, I'm trying to understand on the level of a of a person who watches sports, people who are willing to give their money to the, to to athletes or mm-hmm. to the industry. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out is why do they value sports on such a level? Like it's just guys throwing the ball and guys running around on the field. Well, because like to them, it's it's not it's not just that. Like we're gonna talk about like somebody like Kobe, right? Like and of course, so I'm from California, so you know what it is already. So everybody I know is from California, so I'm getting. I'm getting texts all day, like for the for like for the past what three hours or so, telling me Kobe, you know Kobe's dead and all this, and it's just like the like it really highlights like the impact and how crazy it is. Like you can never meet somebody, like you, I've never met Kobe in my life, right? But like it's crazy for not knowing somebody personally, like the level of impact, and like basically what I'm trying, like I'm saying that to say why that's so important to people. Like why you see people wear like these these crazy outfits and like they'll they'll pay like these you know mm-hmm. prices and shit for the ticket, is because like it means something like more like it's it's a piece of your childhood or like in Kobe's instance like you know like he made aside from aside from him being a basketball player he made you want to be a better human, you know what I'm saying like he like he always pressed for like excellence and like whatever you do whether that's basketball. Ballet. If you're a, a teacher, like you, you be the best like teacher possible, okay. you know. And like when it's like a family thing, like that's a whole another conversation. When it's like I mean, we talk about sports, stuff so like that, you know, whatever entails in sports. I was like, in um I was in Texas for for a while, and football in Texas is, is like a religion out there, like like literally, like they have days like dedicated to like certain schools. If you go there and you wear like that school's color, like on that day. Mm. You get like half off of like whatever you buy in there. <laughs> well, that's pretty dope. Like it's crazy, <laughs> man. So yeah, I, I I think if I if I could put my input on some of the things you just said, I think that people like competition. I think yeah, people like, are very much into. I mean, it could be anything. I mean, we got people who play chess. We got yeah. chess masters, and people go around. I mean, golf is a, a calm, right. quiet sport, and golf is pretty hard. I'm not taking away from golf, but you have thousands of people standing out there watching the guy hit a little ball. That's the way of life, man. Like, I, like that's what we we're talking about when you first asked the question. Like, just on a primal level, right? Like, that's the that's the forever lasting story. Is 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 me versus you? It's man versus nature. It's like like sports are the perfect opera of that. Like man versus circumstance. Like who? Yeah. Like who's like like how can we, you know, assert our will like over? Like the conditions and, and and come out victorious, you know, and mm-hmm. like you know, like I kind of answered your question. Like that's what sports is about. It's about that that principle of, of victory and defeat and learning how to exist in both of those spaces and stuff. Like it's a like it's a really really you know complex. I mean, like I said, I get it. Conversation. I mean, especially when you play in the sport, I definitely get it. Yeah. But me watching other people play sports. Yeah, I feel you. <laughs> it's like. That's what I'm like with baseball. Like, <laughs> like I hate, like I hate wait, I, I hate watching baseball. It's, it's boring, as, boring as hell. But playing baseball is pretty fun. Football too. Like, I'm, I'm less of a football guy. So, like, I like playing football, but watching football to me is, is like. So let me ask you this: Do you boring. think? All right. So there are athletes out there that make millions and millions of dollars playing a sport: NFL, NBA, you name it, NBA. Playing all these sports and they're making so much money. 
And some people take it beyond sports. Some people actually take it to the next level and get political or get into the arena of, you know, making statements about certain things. Mm -hmm. Do you think athletes should be moral leaders? Do you think athletes should represent something that people can look up to, not just in the arena, but outside of the arena as a human being? Do you, like for Kobe, for instance, or LeBron James, do you think that they should be like moral leaders or people that give advice on certain things in life, like as far as issues like abortion or, you know, gun rights, you know, different issues that we got going on in society. Do you think athletes are somebody that should be given their two cents on these issues? I think, I think if you're an athlete um, and you're kind of like proving yourself and you're showing yourself to be competent enough in that subject or at least um, like showing like the effort or, or the willingness to learn more or promote that particular cause, like if you if you've earned those strikes, then yeah. And like that could be an athlete or anybody, but like specifically athletes, yeah. Especially like, like especially if you're a leader, right? Like, like some Joe Smo scrub on, on like the bench, and like nobody's gonna <laughs> care what he's he's gonna say because he don't have that that pool. I I like the bench warmers. The bench, the bench warmers yeah. are the ones who get that cake and they ain't never gotta exert themselves to a certain level. You know, you can kind of stay out of the shadows. Nah, nah. No, if no. I play nationally, I would want to be a bench warmer all yeah, day. <laughs> hey, look, I ain't mad. At, I ain't mad at no dude riding the pine for no, you know, honey k <laughs> and, and up a, a year, bro. Like, trust me, I ain't mad at you. So, what's your favorite sport? Favorite sport, basketball. Like, ba like basketball is the best sport ever. <laughs> like, I don't like. I don't understand how. I don't even see where the conversation. Okay, I, I don't watch sports, but I can tell you right now, I think that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, like, I think boxing and UFC is definitely better than basketball. That's a good argument. See, look, like those two, like, I'll, okay, for that, I'll take that argument. Any other sport, I'm like, no, like, there's no, there's no argument. I don't yeah. know now. Hockey, like, those guys literally, like, hockey. Hey, that's a tricky thing. You hey, want that ice? On well, like, just the dexterity, like, you're moving this shit with a, with a, uh, a stick. A stick. <laughs> <laughs> on some ice, on some skates. It's, it's not a stick. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, you know. And trying to hit that puck, like, yeah. uh, so we were talking, and, like, That's crazy. you know, I just, I get why people like sports, but mm -hmm. I don't understand why it's as prevalent as it is. Like, I mean, people literally go crazy for sports. It's like, there are people out there who, like you yeah. said, get dressed up in the paint yeah. and they go out there and they it's tailgate. Half blue and half white. Yeah, you yeah. know? And like, if that's your thing, that's your thing. It's America and I, I think that you should be free to do those things and more power to you. Um, I just think that it's just, it's just not that entertaining. I, 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 I just can't I can't understand. Like guys, literally be like, arguing you, about this stuff. So, like, did you grow up in that? Like, did your family grow up in that culture? Like, did you have like your no. dad and your uncles and shit? And, I know? didn't grow up around anybody who was like real sports fans. Okay. But I did grow up playing a lot of sports, and that's my friends were big fan um, sports fans. Well, well, see, like that's like a lot to do with it. Like, if you have like family, because like, like I met one dude, his. Favorite team was like, I, like I forgot what team. It was like it was somebody whack though, and I was just thinking, I was like, <laughs> I was like, man, like, like that must be like an emotional. Pit. I didn't even like the football like, games yeah, or the basketball games, like really? the video games. I, I didn't even like it. I'd you rather play, play like, Splinter Cell. I'd rather be like that lone guy sneaking up on some yeah. guy ready to take him out, and you know, I just you never. Better get, get a solid ass. Yeah, y'all yeah. hear if y'all hear some noise in the background? That's my dog. She having a great time back then, so I apologize. But <laughs> that's the audience, right there. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, so let me ask you this: There's been a long debate about who's better, like Kobe or LeBron, and and I don't know if it's a bad time to compare, you know. But like, what's with the comparisons, like? How can you truly compare one athlete to another athlete? Bro, like like that, like that's human nature. Like that's what I'm saying. Like like sports is the best physical example of like the human struggle. Like that, like that, you know, like aside from the money, aside from the fame, and like all the trappings of it, like just sports itself. Like it's the perf it's the perfect analogy of like a human struggle. Like that's just like that's just. That's just what it is, and like it's not even just sports. Like even with politics, like there's 
It's red and it's blue. So it's left and it's right. Do you think there's? Yeah. Do you think it's a personality thing? Because like, here I am saying that. Oh, I don't watch sports or whatever. But if you put gladiators on the TV screen, I'll be the first guy sitting right there watching these guys literally murder each other. <laughs> and I guess like my mentality, like I like I said, UFC and boxing is more, I guess, a physical contact sport that really pushes you to your limits where the other guy's really trying to take you down or take you out. And even then, I still can't get into that. Like, I'll go watch, like, the highlights. Mm -hmm. I'll watch when the guy gets his arm broken <laughs> or choked but out. The, but, like, not the whole. Oh, no. Like, the whole sitting around trying to get a good hit in. And I'm, I'm like, like, man, I'd rather watch a movie, you know? You know what it is, though, man? Like, you got to... You got to really understand, like, the mechanics of the sport. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, once you understand, like, the rules of something, like, then you can really appreciate how difficult it is to, like, succeed under that, like, just under those those guidelines. Like, for example, like, I love basketball. And, like, um, I used, like, I used to hate, I used to hate football. Like, I'm, I'm kind of cool on football now, but I used to hate that shit. Yeah. But, like, all my boys like football. So, when I kicked it with them, like, I was forced to watch that shit. So, like, they just sat me down one day and, like, they just broke down, like, the different rules. And, um, and like, that kind of helped me appreciate it more. Well, let me you ask know? you this, though. Uh, there are other professions or jobs out there that are very difficult. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, coal miners have a very difficult job. Yeah, but that's not sexy. We're not lining though, up to watch that's coal miners. That's not sexy, miners. though. Like, what, like, Ain't nothing sexy about coal. So it has to be a oh, sexy like, element to it. Why it gotta does it have be, to be a sexy element? It gotta element be girls. It gotta be like the money involved. It gotta be <laughs> fame. You know what I'm saying? It gotta be dog, dude. Like sports is okay. You don't even like sports if you like reality TV or soap operas. Like sports is the perfect soap opera, dog. Really, dog. Like you got, you got. Like there's so many conversations that can be sprung from sports. You got the whole like race conversation, right? Like, like why, like why are you know typically like why is a stereotype that black the athletes are better if they're oh, black? Or, okay, yeah. You know, or even like the owners versus you know, like there's so many different dichotomies that we could talk about through sports. Like it's just like it's not just sports, man. Like it's a lot. It's like very layered. You know. Do what I'm you saying? think that people are making it more layered than it has to be? Well, yeah, but like that, like that's like. Like, such is life. Like, such is human life. Like, like, that's what we do as humans. Do you think that some athletes have a, a biological advantage over other athletes? Oh, yeah. And do you think oh, that yeah. kind of... Bo. Bo knows. <laughs> Bo, man. That boy... That boy is like Hercules. Like, literally. Like, if, if there was really a Hercules... See, that that, that, that kind of takes, takes away the competition element of it for me. Because if you got some guy who's biologically just from the, the start... More fitted and suited to be playing basketball or football, mm -hmm. and you got this other guy who's not. He had to work ten times harder to even try to get on this guy level, and he still could never be as good as this guy. Mm -hmm. You know, like it would be different if everybody started off on the same playing field, and right. it was like just determination and trickery or whatever it is you let had me to just do. Stop. Let me just like, let me just stop because like, I already like I already know where you're going with that right there. Okay, but like, like that's what I'm saying. Life, I'm um, sports is the perfect analogy for life. Cause like that's how life is, right? Oh yeah. Like that's how life is. So life ain't fair. No, like, <laughs> like you know that. I mean, but we live in a society where everybody wants it to be fair. Everybody's talking about this person yeah. got way more than me. I should have the same amount of him or mm -hmm. more. Like, I'm, I'm with you there. Life ain't fair. Mm -hmm. And of course, people like that story with an underdog who works harder and you know really strives to be better and he comes out on top people love those stories mm -hmm. i mean that's usually what they sell us in hollywood the underdog guy who actually comes out on top so you know mm, okay so that's a, that's another unique question like for people who like sports you know sports doesn't start off on an even playing field is that something that ties to your political beliefs also is like yo everybody ain't going to start from the same spot and nor should everybody Everybody ain't going to end up in the same place. So is it like, should we enjoy the game of life? Should we enjoy the, the strive forward to try to overcome and be the best you can be? Or should we just say, well, I can never be that because I wasn't born with a silver spoon in my mouth or something like that. Is sports something that can... No, because like, look, all right. So like, 
So like the way I look at it is like this. So when I say like sports is the perfect um, analogy or metaphor for life, like I like I mean that literally, right? And like by that I mean like sports, like art or music or or whatever is a mirror. It's like it's holding up a mirror to humanity, like not to be all um, all philosophical with it and stuff, but um, like the reason I say that, right? Your question was, okay, if I wasn't born with a fair shake or whatever, like, shot this quick. Uh, Muggsy Bowes, this fool's like 5'8". It's like, no, like, he's even, he's like 5'6". You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you know what so, I'm saying? So, what can we learn from sports, like, you, in life? You work with, I mean, and see, like, that's what I'm saying for you. Like, you like you would actually like sports because a lot of your, a lot of the things that you say, you believe in, like, they kind of align with. See, but I get that without sports. sports. So. Like, I, I like I don't have role models. Like, I don't have role models. I don't care if you Michael Jackson. I don't care if you Barack Obama, Trump. I don't have role models. And the reason I don't have role models is because I don't strive to be like anybody else. I'm going to strive to be the best I can be. And as soon as you start trying to, trying to be like somebody else, you make a mistake. Mm-hmm. Nobody can be uniquely you. So... A lot of people, when we talk about these sports, like you say, you can learn a lot from sports. And, you know, Mm -hmm. you see these guys go out there and they work their hardest and all that. Mm -hmm. I mean, yes, you can be inspired, you know. But my my, my thing is, should I really be impressed by a guy who plays sports? I mean, I mean, you can be impressed or like not, like it's not, you know, you don't have to, like you don't have to watch sports and shit, man. But like, I'm just saying, like for people who do, you know, like, I really, like, it's not hard, like, to see why or what they get from sports. Like, you get inspiration from sports. And, like, just and, like just on, like, a principle level in general, like, we're typically in awe of people who can do things that we cannot or will not do. That's true. You know what I'm saying? So, like, when I say, like, sports has these di- all these different, like, this plethora of different just life principles and shit like that. Like, Are there any negatives to sports? Are there any negatives to sports? <laughs> yeah. Is there any, like, are there any negatives to sports? I wouldn't say, like, there's any negative to sports. Um, I think sports, just like anything else, like, we'll take religion, right? Like, I think in, in theory, religion is, you know, like, you, you know what it's supposed to do, but the problem is people. Like, people take that in. I mean, without people, you wouldn't have it. You, I mean, you can't okay. separate the religion from people because the religion came from people. Therefore, like, mm-hmm. you can't really separate the two. Rel- the, the religion that you originally got right. is because the person who originally made the religion, mm-hmm. that's what their vision was. Mm-hmm. So it's still tied to that individual person. So you can well, say, see, like, well, you're not living up to the ideals of that person's religion. Well, see, all right, so by that, like, what I mean is this. And, like, why well, you can separate the two, right? Like, we'll take the Bible. Um, it's, it's fact that, like, there are many more books of the Bible that at some point, some scholars, some priests, whoever, like different people throughout history, like they like kind of audited the Bible, like they edited the Bible basically and stuff, right? Yeah. So like that, so like that's what I mean by like, there's like a message that started off. For example, like Jesus came down and he preached one one message. He didn't say like, John, like you start Baptist <laughs> and like Judas, I want you to be a Mormon and like, you know what I'm saying? Like he didn't like he didn't say all that. He just he just said, love God, that was it. And then we came and it was like, nah, like we gotta be Catholics and it's not that simple. But Methodists and I, stuff I, like that. It's not that simple. But like I get you. I get I get, right. I get, you, what get the, you get the point though, right? Yeah, I get okay. the point. And uh back on the sports tip, um when I asked you like, does sports have negative ramifications? Like, do you think that there are a group of people out there who risk all they had to become sports like um athletes and to make it to the top and they don't make it most people who play sports don't make it to the nfl most people who play sports don't make it to the nba Mm -hmm. so there are a lot of people out there who are chasing this dream that will never make it Mm -hmm. and that's because they've been sold by the nfl the nba and these other sports organizations that hey you know you work hard and you you know you give it your all you make you make could be the next Kobe you make could be the next LeBron mm-hmm. and it, I'm not look sports is hard I agree sports is hard mm-hmm. but is it harder than being a neuroscientist 
Is it harder than being an astrophysicist? Mm -hmm. Is it harder because it's easier to use your body than it is to use your mind? So do you think there is like sports give this message, especially these guys who make millions and millions of dollars? Who do, Most people want to be millionaires. Mm -hmm. If I could just get my shot. Do you think that sends a message to society that, hey, you don't have to read these books. You don't have to become the smartest of the smartest. Mm -hmm. You don't have to work hard and make your brain your your primary tool to make it through the world. You could just use your body. If you physically work hard enough, you could become an NFL player. So what about the millions of people who don't make it in sports? Like, mm -hmm. do you think the fact that they're paying these athletes all these millions of dollars to give people a false sense of, it, not a false sense of purpose, or it gives people the false idea that, most people won't make it. And people want those millions of dollars. It's a false incentive. That's what I'm going to say. So, by, like, that question, like, let me ask, like, do you, so, like, are you saying that, like, there's some sort of, like, agenda on, like, on, on sports part that, that, like, that pushes that message out, like, on purpose to people? Not necessarily. I think it's, it happens, it's a byproduct. What happens when you pay this guy you can talk about rappers. You can talk about NBA players, football players. Mm -hmm. What happens when you pay these guys these millions of dollars? Do you think that people that grow up in the projects or people that grow up dirt poor mm -hmm. don't see that, hey, if I learn to play football really good, I could be a millionaire. Mm -hmm. I don't have to create an invention. I don't have to create a medicine. I don't have to make the next Microsoft. I can just use my body and I can become a millionaire. But what they don't, they're not telling you like, yo, most people don't make it. And it might just be the lack of information that the league puts out there to let people know, hey. I know. don't know. Like, I don't, like, the message that I I hear from, like, sports and, and like, what I've seen um, as far as sports goes is, um, like, they like they do, like, they do make it known how, like, rare it is. Like, I, like that's okay. why... Like, that's why, like, they pump these people. Like, Michael Jordan is fucking the GOAT and everything, right? <laughs> yeah. And, like, this is, like, before um, internet and, like, social media. So, he was really, like, they were really able to, like, prop him up and stuff like that. But, but like, I say like I say that to say that, um, you know, like, that's, like, this has been something that's been, like, historical and stuff. And, again, like, I think it just goes back to just, like, how, like, that, in that industry is set up. Um, cause like, what's like the, like, what's the alternative? So what? So, like, so, so are you saying like, we should like punish athletes or something no, like that? No, like, no, like, no, no. I mean, no, definitely not. Uh, like I said, I think sports is a good thing. Definitely when it allows people who may have not otherwise mm -hmm. been, been successful, be successful. Mm -hmm. I think that it helped a lot of minority groups. It helped a lot of people in poverty, mm -hmm. uh, from different backgrounds, from different races, from different countries, it allowed people to be successful. And that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these athletes go out and do good things with their money. They they donate, they help people, they build schools. They do a lot of things that are very important. And we mm -hmm. appreciate all the athletes out there who takes your money and does something positive with it. Mm -hmm. I would never want to take away sports. I just, uh, we can notify or we can recognize that it may incentivize people who may otherwise never make it to follow a dream that is very slim to make. It's like playing a lottery. Yeah. You're, you're not more likely to win the lottery, but how many people line up all the time to try to win a lottery? Yeah, like I don't like I don't know like I don't know like the remedy for that because you know like that's like that's one of those things where it's like okay, like you have a choice. You know what I'm saying? Like I like I can't I can't nobody can be at fault for what I choose to do. Like if I if I decide at a very early age that hey, you know, and like and like again like that happens all like like you said more people don't make it than than do and like that happens all the time like we see all the time the story of the guy who was like this hot shot in high school or college and then he ends up being like a college football coach or yeah he ends up like in sports therapy so like there are other avenues like to you know go down and stuff I don't think it's like as dark and like dreary as you know, like the theory of somebody's pushing this agenda. But they're glorified way more than a lot of other fields. Athletes are like celebrities, and they're okay. glorified on a scale that's... Look, mm. it's not their fault. I mean, that's what people want. Mm. I, I can't sit here and argue against human nature. 
if that's what people want, that's what they want, right? But it's like there are people out there doing a lot of more important work. That can literally yeah. save lives. But it's not sexy though, baby. Come on, man. Yeah, it's not sexy. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's one thing that gets it's me. Ain't nothing sexy about being like... a surgeon. <laughs> <laughs> ain't nothing ain't no sexy about being like the mayor of, uh, of, of Grand Rapids or, or some Look, shit like that. Come being, on. Af- being an athlete is awesome. <laughs> the challenge is this. How do we reach <laughs> other people and reach the younger generation and let mm-hmm. them know like, yo, it's just as great as being... Mm-hmm. A neuroscience or scientist or being a uh, astrophysicist or mm-hmm. you know finding a cure to cancer like to me that's sexy I, I know to most people that's not as sexy as af- athletes yeah, yeah, but yeah. Yeah, I got you. you know how do we increase that message because right now sports is reaching people on a scale that those other fields are not yeah. and I'm not taking away from sports I'm just using this as a way Mm-hmm. To focus the conversation on other important professions that the young need to know about, mm-hmm. that we need to glorify in a different way. Mm-hmm. Because at the end of the day, if everybody who wanted to become an athlete became an athlete, mm-hmm. we'd have too many athletes and not enough doctors. Mm-hmm. Not, and, and you know, so I mean, yeah, that 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 really is something that I hope nobody think I'm hating on sports because I'm not hating on sports. Mm-hmm. But I want to point out something. I'm glad that we having this conversation about sports because me, me and just Dre, we had these conversations about other things on other episodes and that mentality that he has towards sports. He may not have that same mentality when it comes to other aspects of life and vice versa. It's funny, so, it's, it's funny you said that because like, like, I was thinking that exact same shit about you, bro. So, so please, please carry on, please. So, <laughs> so, I, I was sitting here. I was like, I'm like, really? I'm like, no. I'm like, you don't see how I'm sitting in shock. Like, okay. I was like, okay, cool. Man. But like, you know, you know, just like with health insurance or. Right. You know diversity, okay. you know, in politics. <laughs> you know, we we had a conversation about these things, right, right, right. and like when it comes to diversity in sports, mm-hmm. it's the best man win. It's the guy who's the best athlete, the fittest guy. Nobody's arguing for more white people to be in the NBA. Nobody cares. It's all about who gives you the best game, right? Okay. So. Why don't you take that same mentality when it comes to diversity in politics or when it comes to universal health care? Like, life ain't fair. Sometimes you're going to have to fight for what you want. Sometimes you're going to have to work that job. And you might have to work two or three jobs to get to the point where you can only work one job and get the health care you want. Mm -hmm. Why is it that in society we expect everybody to come out equal, but we don't in our sports? Like... Why don't you care about diversity in sports at this moment? I do. I do care about. So diversity. you think we need more white people in the NBA? No, like, like I, like I feel that I feel that. Um, like for example, like we're talking about diversity, right? Like, like one of the best people in the NBA right now, like top, like top five, and like don't don't at me. Um, <laughs> it's Luka, Luka Doncic or whatever. White dude from um, like Ukraine or something like that. Like that like dude is killing it right now. Like he's like he's literally he's twenty years old. He's like better than LeBron was and stuff. You know what I'm saying? So, but like I say that to say it's just like uh, you know um, you know that like what you know if I use the, the same logic from the left, I would just say mm-hmm. like somebody said, well Obama was president, mm-hmm. so that means we're not racist anymore. That doesn't make any sense. You know what I'm saying? It's like you can mm-hmm. name one white guy or maybe five white guys mm-hmm. in the business that's hot right now, but it's overly dominated by black men in the mm-hmm. NBA. Yeah. So are you looking to have an equal amount of white people, an equal amount of Mexicans, an equal amount of like all the different races said, in the NBA? So like the reason like I brought up like the white, like I wasn't, I wasn't using like the, but I have, I have, I have black friends. <laughs> like I wasn't using that combo or nothing like that. Like the, like the reason I was saying that is because um, it's kind of hard like to, jumping between those two subjects because with sports it you know it's like that's what i'm saying like it's perfect like it's one of the only things to where if you're good you get the spot if you're not like you could be white 
green, whatever. I think what you're talking about as far as like politics and everything. Shouldn't um, it be the same? What you mean? If you're the best. With politics and sports? Yeah. No, yeah. The best man get the job. Yeah, but what I'm saying is like I'm consistent in that. Like, like okay. what I'm talking about is when we talk about being inclusive and stuff, like my thing was it wasn't because they were white or black. It was if it's if it's a if it's a specific um, conversation or problem or whatever, you know, somebody who's more like familiar with the people of that community or somebody who's familiar with that culture, like they like they like they'd be better served than somebody who's not. So okay. like so like like that like that's kind of what I was talking about. So let me ask you this: with that same example, do you think that we need just as much white dudes? In the NBA, because white dudes know how other white guys play. Okay. They grew up in the environment with nothing with white guys, and white guys play a little different. They're on a little yeah. different level, or maybe lower than the right. black neighborhood. Let like, should answer, we be representative? Let me, answer, <laughs> let me answer that again. Like that's why sports are perfect because it's not about how white guys play. It's not about how black guys play. It's about the game. Like one of my favorite. Like, I'm from L.A., or, or I'm from Cali, so by default, I have to love the Lakers. All, everybody I know hates me, though, because I love the Spurs. Why do I love the Spurs? Because, like, everybody else plays, like, tricks and stuff and, you know, all these gimmicks and stuff. The Spurs, like, it's just, they just do the right thing. They just do what makes sense, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And, like, that's what it's about. You just, you just follow the rules and stuff. It's not about how this person plays. If there's like a slew of white people that come and like they're all better than all the black dudes, cool. Like, should I sign them? I'll okay. put them on the Lakers. So, when it comes to politics, mm -hmm. you all about who's the best at the political game. Because politics no. has rules. No, hold up, hold up. There are ways. Let's be, cl let's be clear. Because like, I don't agree with that. I don't agree with it's whoever plays the game the best. I agree with who's best for the people. Because like that's, in theory, that's supposed to be okay. your job. Okay, Those and I'm, I'm with ones. you on that. Okay. So, whoever's best for the job, whether he's white, black, Hispanic, it does not matter. Whoever is best for the job, okay. right? Okay. Because if Obama had been a white guy, you would still like him, right? Right. Cool. I'm glad we agree on that. Okay. Now, tell me where my logic falls, like where I'm switching the post because, you know... <laughs> I'm all, I'm all about the best man winning. I'm all I'm all about, you know, mm -hmm. pick the best person for the job. Mm -hmm. So am I not consistent in my worldview? Are you talking about as it pertains to sports? Yeah, like, how we translate from sports to politics, like Well, like no, well well yeah, like that's, like that's what I'm saying. Like I agree with you. Like you have you have certain ways of like certain principles and stuff which you've expressed before which aren't Aligning with sports, so like that's why I was kind of surprised when, when I was like, "You don't follow sports at all." Like we'll take. Um, you said that are in line with sports, or yeah, not? The oh, are, okay. The are in line with sports. Yeah, definitely. And now that you sat here and broke down like a lot of the things that entails in sports, mm -hmm. like I'm sitting here thinking, like you're right, like those mm -hmm. things I can't get with. It's like the best man for the the job, the the freedom for people to go out and spend their money and to watch these guys. Mm -hmm. You know, like, these are... Now I'm starting to understand sports is very American. It, it's very American. it's very American. And, like, now that you explain it to me, it's like, you know what? That makes a lot of sense to me. You know, so... Hmm. I didn't think that I would walk away yeah, feeling I mean, enlightened. You gotta watch sports. You know? like, there were so many things that, went, like, when uh, Conor McGregor fought last Saturday, man, like, I want to call you and that. be like, man, let's, let's go down to the uh, wild. I like Conor Washington. McGregor. Like, yeah. And I, I, I'm like this. I like certain people because they show up in my life for a particular reason. Like, it's this one guy named Kobe. Okay. He's a Trump supporter. That's how he came into my world. So I was rooting for him to win the fight, even yeah. though he lost. Uh, but yeah, like yeah. you know, simple stuff like that, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. where you back somebody because mm -hmm. one, they may be from your neighborhood, they may be from your city, right. or whatever the case may be. So I was sitting here rooting for the guy. I didn't even watch the fight. Mm -hmm. I just waited till the fight was over. Then I went and tuned in to try to figure out who won. Yeah. <laughs> and then I went and watched the highlights. Yeah. <laughs> you know, right. yeah, yeah. so yeah. super. Yeah. So. Yeah. Anything else we can talk about with sports that you want to touch on before we get out of here? No, nah, I just like I just want to um, I just want to say, uh, you know, 
prayers and condolences goes out to Kobe's family and stuff. Um, you know, we didn't know the man personally and stuff, but we kind of did. You know, especially people that I grew up around. You know, it's like all my boys sent me up today. We had a we had a group text, and it was like we lost like mm -hmm. one of the homies or something, man. Like this man's been in our lives for what twenty some years. I can't even like picture a world where Kobe's not in it. Like you don't even you don't even calculate that. So for it to go down the way that it did this morning, man, that's that's crazy. Um, Kobe, thank you, man, for you know being you. You know, you know six like like six billion people on the planet and he wanted to be the best at basketball like the audacity <laughs> of that like to like out of six billion people you want to be the best at your craft yeah and then like to actually do it you know what i'm saying like that's like that like that's the beauty of sports you know because like beyond sports just just that sheer human will like to be greater than where you started and stuff you know and, like that's very Definitely. inspirational and yeah. Thank you, Kobe. You are missed by a lot. And I never R. watched P. sports, but everybody knows who you are, Kobe. Everybody knew Man. you could not escape your name. And your name will live on. So we just want to send our condolences to your family and to your friends and loved ones. And, you know, my boy just Dre praying for you, for your family. So we just want to show love. Yeah. So. Okay? I, I got the best hope and condolences for the family. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm an you atheist. Pray, I don't pray. <laughs> do, a, do, a, do a prayer for us real quick. Yeah. But look. <laughs> but look. Hit that like and that subscribe button. Share to all your friends and your family. Let's get it going. Uh, I appreciate all the support out there. I'm going to be doing an episode with the podcast, uh, Dogma Debate with David Smalley. That's going to be coming up. So uh, I'll let you know when that's going to drop. Uh, make sure you, you know, watch and tune in. You came, you saw, you heard. Now run and tell them I said it. And if they ask for me by name, make sure you say it twice. This is the Javier Javier Show.